Hello, my name is Mark Simpson, and today we're going to be covering a crash course introduction to Adobe InDesign CS6. Adobe InDesign is a program that's designed for print and layout projects. So it's great if you're working on a poster or a booklet or uh, even as an alternative to Microsoft PowerPoint for slideshow layouts. It's really great at that. Uh, this video is assuming that you have no previous experience or knowledge of the program. And it's a short video to just help you get started. There's lots of other resources available online to you as a UCLA student, and I highly recommend you take advantage of them after reviewing this video that gives a simple introduction. Okay, so let's get started. So when you open InDesign, you are shown this splash window uh, that allows you to open up some recent items or to create a new one. And over here on the right side, you can create a new document or book. Um, some people think, oh, I'm making a book, so therefore I should click the book option, or it's like a booklet. Uh, and in InDesign terminology, that's actually different because a book in this case is just a collection of documents that are referenced. So unless you're doing on, working on a complicated project, you probably just want to go with the default of document. So let's click that. And then we're given this prompt. This is the new document window. Uh, a couple things to look at. So the first thing you want to define is the number of pages that you're going to be working with. So let's just say we have eight. This prompt menu right here, facing pages, if you're laying a book, something's going to be printed, facing pages just is another way of saying a spread. So that means that if you imagine a book, when you open up the book, you have the left page and the right page. Together they make a spread. So if you're doing a poster or a slideshow where you won't have facing pages, you can just turn that option off. But if you're doing a book, you want to turn that option on. Page size, you have a drop-down menu here with some preset sizes. So letters 8.5 by 11, tabloids 11 by 17, those are the most common. And then we have some uh, less common ones down here. And then you can also always enter a custom size. So let's say you had to make a 36-inch poster. The default sizing is points, which is a measurement system used for layout and graphic design. But you could just as easily type in 36 and then a double quotation mark for inches, and then it will adjust the size automatically for you. But for our purposes today, we're going to do a letter size. Uh, orientation, you can either do a portrait or a landscape, and you see that these numbers will change accordingly. So let's keep it a portrait. You can define the number of columns, um, and this is great if you know how many columns you're working with or how many you like to work with. I'm going to leave it at one, uh, and there are ways to introduce columns that we're going to talk about in a minute. And then finally, the margins. Margins are super important for a print document because you want to make sure that there's enough white space around the border so that the document can be printed well, your text doesn't look cluttered on the edges, uh, and and it just it looks how it should. So it defaults to three points, which is um, about three quarters of an inch, which is perfect. And then notice that when I turn facing pages on and off, when it's facing page, when facing pages are turned off, it's individual pages, so you have a top, a bottom, a left, and a right margin, versus when you have facing pages, you have an inside and an outside margin. Generally, it's a good idea to have a higher inside margin or a bigger inside margin, so I'm going to click this uh, chain icon to break the link, so that way I can manipulate these settings individually, and I'm just going to increase the inside margin by about 50%. So I have a little bit more space on the inside. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to open up my document. So I have my brand new document here, and I'm going to scroll down and look at these other pages. Uh, to zoom in and out, you there's a couple ways. You can hit Command-2. We'll zoom in at 200%, or Command-1 at 100. Command-0 will fit the all of the pages inside the window. You can also hold down the Alt key 
and use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, and then to pan, you can either grab these bars at the bottom to drag left and right and up and down. Uh, your scroll wheel will go up and down. Or I like to push the space bar, gives me this little hand, and then I can grab the spread and move it around like this. Okay? So as you can see, we have a wider inside margin, which is perfect if this is going to be a printed document, and less on the outside. Okay, so let's drop an image in. That's usually the first thing someone wants to do. So there are a couple ways to add images to InDesign. Uh, the first way is to use the rectangle frame tool over here. Uh, all of your texts and images will be placed inside of a frame. So if you click and drag and make a text frame or make a frame, now I can put either text or an image inside of it. If you go up here to File, Place, that will allow you to place an image. I'm going to go in my desktop, Images, and I'm going to drop in this image right here. Notice that that dropped that image in to 100% of the image size so that it doesn't fit the text box. But I can easily adjust that by coming up to here and say fit content to frame. And what that will do is that'll scale up my content so it fits inside of the frame. Another way to add images is if you come to your Finder window or your Microsoft Explorer if you're using a PC, you can just click and drag images like this and then just drop them in. And so you see how my icon changes, it says it's preloaded with this image. So then what I can do is I can like click and drag and it will fill in the image for me there. So that's perfect. So let's add a let's add some text. So I'm going to come over here to the left side to my type tool. Click. And then I'm going to click and drag to create a type window. So you see I have a cursor, so I can just start typing. So I'm going to call, say this is bike share. And so you can see how this text came in at the default text size, which if I double click here, you see on this top panel here, it tells me that it's Minion Pro size 12 with regular weight. You can also go window types and tables character and that will prompt this side panel and you have all of the same options here on the right side as you do up top. So e either one does the same thing. So I'm going to use a Myriad Pro and I'm going to make this bold or I'll come down here to the drop menu and make it bold. Okay, and so now I want this to be the entire width of my page. So there's a couple ways I could do that. If I select all the text, I can come here to this drop down menu and make it 72. But you see that I could probably stand to have it be a little bit bigger. So if you come to the this data entry box, you can change the value. So if I made it 100, that's too big. It doesn't fit my box anymore. I can make it a little bit smaller, maybe an 80. So that looks good. Uh, you can also do a command or control shift period, which is the greater than symbol, and just bump up that size. And if the text, like it just does, disappears like that and you see a red box pop up, that means that your text frame is too small for the amount of text that you have. So you can either make the text smaller or just grab the handle and just pull it down here, make it a little bit bigger. I'm just going to bump this size up just a little bit. Great. Okay. So now I'm going to insert another text box up here. 
I'm going to say urban transportation of the future. I'll leave it as a Minion Pro. And I'll make another one for the Capital Bike Share down here as a caption. And I'll say Washington, D.C. has a very successful. Oops. program. Okay. Now let's say I wanted to bring in some more images down here. There's a couple ways to do that again. So I could go file place, then over in my images I have some stock images of people riding, so I can just click and drag. But you see that brought it in as 100%, so that's really big. So I don't want to do it this way. If I want to drag in multiple files at the same time, I can click Bike Rider, Share the Road, and City Bike. So let's say I click and drag that, and then let go. And then when I come here back to InDesign, you can see that my cursor has all of these images preloaded. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag across the page and release. And that's going to put in one image. But if I wanted to put in multiple images, I would click and drag. And then with my right arrow, Let's go back. So I have all three images. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag the width that I want, and then with my right arrow on my keyboard, I'm going to hit it twice, one, two, to subdivide the frame into three. And now when I let go, all three images are going to be brought in together. Okay, and as you can see, they're all sort of different sizes, so I'm just going to adjust my text frame down here just to get them about the same size. And then to make this guy a little bit bigger, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say fit content to frame, and that's just going to increase the size of the image so it takes up that whole side. It changes the proportions of it, so if you don't want to do that, you can undo click on the image in the center and you get this brown box which is defining the size of the image within the text frame go over here to your scale tool click it in the center so your scale point of reference is in the center and then while holding shift click and drag until the entire image occupies the frame perfect then I'm going to select these three guys and pull them down to the bottom of the page here. Okay. Looking good so far. So I'm just going to tweak a couple things, bring this up here. I'm going to grab this handle here, make it a little smaller. I'm going to pull up this bike share. You know, maybe this text, I actually want to make it a little bit bigger, so I'm going to select it. Let's say I'm going to make it an 18. Okay, pull this image up. Pull this one up. And you'll see, as indicated by those two arrows, those two green arrows that show up, InDesign is really smart about spacing of objects. And so what it's telling me here is that the space where I've dragged this text frame is the same at the bottom of the capital bike share image as it is at the top of the image. So I can release and know that this space here is the same as this space here. Keeps everything nice and evenly spaced and looking nice. Okay, pull this one up. All right, now let's say I wanted to drop in some more text. I'm going to 
select my type tool and click and drag the whole width and again using my right arrow I'm gonna hit my right arrow twice to make three text boxes so now I have three text boxes and if I had some text it's easy to bring in text either through a copy and a paste or if you had a Microsoft Word document or a rich text format file whatever you can always select the boxes and then go file place here which is command or control D but in this case because I don't have any text what I'm going to do is go to type fill with placeholder text and then what that's going to do is put in uh, just some placeholder text which is generally in Latin just so you get a sense of like the word shape alright so have these three guys to select multiple objects like I just did you hold down the shift key that allows you to select more than one so now all three of these boxes are selected I'm gonna go type fill with placeholder text uh, this text is a little bit too big for me so I'm gonna go to my I'm gonna double click inside the text box and go edit select all or hit command or control a so it's gonna select and highlight all this text and I'm going to bump the size down to 10. Because it really, when you're doing a print document, 12 is, is really big for body text. So I'm just going to make this a 10. So that's looking better. And again, I'm going to hit Control or Command A. Object, or I'm sorry, type. Fill with placeholder text just to fill that up. Okay, great. One thing that's really nice to do with your text is to have a the first letter be of your paragraph be bigger than all the rest. And so you do that by coming to your paragraph panel, which can also be found if you go to window, type in tables, paragraph. And it's these two options down here. This asks you for a drop cap for how many characters so we're gonna to want to do one and then this is gonna say the number of lines so I'm gonna bump that up to three and so you can see now whenever I have the start of a paragraph it's going to make it three characters three lines tall that first character I'm gonna zoom out just see where I'm where I'm at and if you wanna see what the document is going to look like printed like you don't want these borders and frames for reference you can just hit the W key and that will show you what it looks like and how it will be printed so it's looking pretty clean it's missing something though let's add some color so there's a couple ways to add color in InDesign like many other Adobe programs so if I double click on this bike share text and select the text I can go to my color panel, which is also window color. Color. Right now it's black, so it's a CMYK, which is for a print color space, which is perfect, but maybe I want something besides black. So I'm going to go down here to my panel options drop down menu, and I'm going to select CMYK. And here I have a whole color spectrum, so I can just start like picking colors. And then if I click over here, you can see what it looks like. So that's like a nice looking blue, but it's pretty arbitrary. And maybe what I want to do instead is pick some of the blue out of this nice city bike blue. I really like the city bike blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to the city bike blue. I'm going to select my eyedropper tool here. And I'm just going to click somewhere on the bike. And so then you can see that's going to get translated into my color panel and it also is here on your tool panel now one thing to keep in mind is that this image because it was taken with a digital camera is an RGB color space and my default because this is going to be a print document is in CMYK and to avoid getting too far into the weeds it's a good idea to make sure 
your color space is consistent. So if you're working with a print document, you want to stick with CMYK, and if it's going to live on a screen or on the web, RGB is just fine. So in this case, I'm just going to assume that it's okay because this is going to get turned into a PDF. This is going to view it on a screen, so it's not a big deal that there's a discrepancy. But if I wanted to change it, I would have to open up this file in a photo editing program like a Photoshop and change the color settings from RGB to CMYK. But for right now, I have the color that I want, uh, and I'm going to swap it for a fill. And so now what I can do is, let me just select this one more time. So now I have it selected. And if I zoom out here, now I can just select and paint over this text. And as you can see, it filled it with the same blue color as the City Bike logo. So it looks pretty good. And if I select it here in this color panel, there are two things. This button affects how the container of the text is. So in this case, the stroke and fill of the box that contains the text. And this button controls the text itself. So as you can see right now, both the text is filled and it also has a stroke. I don't really want a stroke on the text, so I'm just going to click this box here, and that means none. And that's just going to get rid of the bulk around it. OK, great. So I love that color. Looks nice. Let's add another color for my subtitles, what I'll call a subtitle here and a caption here. Uh, let's say I wanted to use this gray from the City Bike docking station. So what I'm going to do is, again, use my eyedropper tool to select that gray color. And then I'm just going to go in and paint here. Whoops. That's not what I wanted. So I'm going to hit undo. I'm going to make sure I'm going to switch my color between the stroke and the fill, turn off the stroke, and just make sure that my fill is the color that I'm selecting for. So I'm going to come down here and do it again. Select the arrow and now select the eyedropper. Click on there. So my fill is this gray. And then I'm just going to paint it on here and paint it on this header. OK, now I can zoom out and then hit the W key. All right, this is looking really great. This gap is a little bit bigger than I want it to be, so I'm just going to select these three boxes and just click and drag this up. OK, great. So laying that out looks great. OK, next thing that we're going to talk about is now that I've de decided what my colors are and what my typefaces look like, I want to be able to save these to use multiple times throughout this document. And what that means is, is rather than having to click the eyedropper tool to click this color to find it here in the bike or in the docking station, I just want to save this color for future reference. So the way you do that is select the, select the type, and then in your color panel here, click on the, the T that's full of the blue. And then I'm going to go to my swatches panel, which can either be found in the default panel or via window color swatches. Pull this down, and I'm going to hit new swatch. And what that's going to do is save this RGB value from this blue so I can use it at any other time. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Hit W to go back to my layout mode select this and say new and then what you can do in this panel is double click on the blue it's the default setting is to name the color with the value I'm gonna deselect that box and put in city bike blue okay double click that deselect that and say docking station Okay, great. So now I have that saved, so it makes it really easy 
if I wanted to make this text blue, I could just select it and then from my swatches panel, just click my swatch that I already saved and now I have blue text that matches my blue header or my blue title. But that's too much color, so I'm just going to hit uh, Command or Control Z to undo that. You can also go Edit Undo here. You can also save how your paragraphs are formatted or styled through the Paragraph Style panel, which is distinct from the Paragraph panel over here, which we use to pick the size of this drop cap letter. So I'm going to go to Window, Styles, Paragraph Styles, and that's going to open up a menu here. And so how this works is all you have to do is double click inside of a text box or in the middle of some text that you want to save and then hit New Style, double click, double click here and then you get this Paragraph Style Options menu. And I'm just going to call this Title. Okay, and we'll do another one for body text. So I'll just select this and say new body text. And select this to say new caption. And one final one because this drop text or this drop cap has a different default setting than the body text. I'm just going to select that and go new. And I'm going to say, I'm going to call this first body or first sentence in a body panel. Okay, great. So now I have these character styles that are saved. And notice with that flyout menu, you can pull things on and off. So I can just dock it right there, and now if I ever need it, I just click it, and it comes up no problem. Okay, great. So we've made our styles. We've selected the colors that we like. Next thing we are going to want to do is add some page numbers. Now you can do that manually by dropping in pages, page numbers on every page individually and then changing them, but... As you can imagine, if you have a long document, that could get really tedious and confusing, and particularly if pages move around, it's just a lot to keep track of. So InDesign makes it easy on you because it has a special character called a page number character. And what we're going to do is come over here to our Pages panel, and again, that's Window, Pages. You have this master setting, and, and what the master means, and you can see it represented in the A in the top corner of each of these pages, is that all of these pages follow the A master for their formatting. So any changes I make to the master will affect all of these other pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this master page and it's showing me a default spread. I'm going to click my text, text type tool and click and drag and make it text box. And now rather than typing in a number, I'm going to insert a special character. And where you find that is in the type, insert special character, markers, and then current page number. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring it in as an A, but all that means is that it's going to change based on which page it is. So that's great, because if I move pages around, the page numbers will automatically update, and it's a thing that I can just set once and then don't have to think about it ever again. So, that's my page number on my left side, and if I want to put it on my right side, the quickest and easiest way to do that is to click and drag the text box while holding the Alt or Option key, and this is true for all Adobe programs. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring over a new text box on the right side. And so you can see it's aligned over on the right side. Now, the issue here is that this text is still left aligned. I'd like it to be right aligned since it's on the outside of the page. So simple enough, I just go to my paragraph panel and then just click over here to align right. And then it's going to put it on the right side. Okay, great. So now if I go to pages and I double click on my first page, you'll see down here in the lower corner, it puts a page, page number right there. 
and then as I go through to my other pages, it automatically updates. So two has two, three has three, and so on. So that's great. Now, this is a little bit crowded. So what I would probably do is go back to the master page and select these two text boxes. If you want to change where text is positioned in a frame, select the text box and then hit Control or Command B. And what that's going to do is bring up this text frame options panel. And here at the vertical justification, right now it's aligned at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to the center and then hit OK, or you can hit Preview, and so it'll preview it. So it's just going to drop it down just a little bit, give myself a little bit of breathing room. So when I go back to the A page and I'll hit W, you can see plenty of breathing room. Looks great. OK, awesome. So that's like laid out, looking pretty good so far for a title page. But one thing about my title page is that I don't want a page number on it. It's generally true for, for most most layout jobs. You don't want a page number on the first page. So I want to click this, but as you can see, it's on my master, so I can't alter it. But what I can do is if you hold uh, Control or Command and Shift, it will override the master and let you select it. So now I can just select that master page item and delete it. So now I don't have it on the first page. Okay, great. So I have my first page laid out, my titles, my text, looking good. All right, so let's come down to the second page, and let's talk about inserting and linking text. So I'm going to select my type tool here. I'm going to click and drag. Oops. I'm going to click and drag from the top corner. Let's say I want to make this two columns. So I clicked and released it and now it's one column but it's easy enough to add more columns just here on your on this option bar here I can click there and it will just add another text frame for me which is perfect so now if I double click in here I can go type fill with placeholder text and that's just gonna fill it with some generic text uh, it brought it in as the minion 12 default, but that's bigger than my body text. So what I'm going to do is hit double click in here and hit control or command A or edit select all. Select all my text, go to my paragraph style, and now I can just hit body text and it will automatically format it. And much in the same way, I can select this first line and go first body, and then that's going to put in that drop, that drop cap on the first. So we can see how using paragraph styles is really helpful when you're dropping in text. Okay, I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Now, let's say I wanted to add some more text, but link that text to this existing text box. And you have these two boxes here on the top and the bottom of the text. This is the import and this is the outport. And what this does is it allows me to link text boxes together. So that way if changes that I make in one text box will have impact on text that is in other text boxes either before or after. So what I can do is click and drag this text box, pull it out to the side here, click here and then just drop that in there. And so as you can see, what's happening now is as I expand this text box, the text from this left side is going to move inside of it. So pretty cool. So I'm going to add some more text, go type, fill with placeholder text. It's going to drop it in here. Looks great. And then if you get to the end, I can click here. It updates my cursor to show that I'm going to be placing some new text. And if I click once, it's just going to fill a placeholder text box right here on this other page. So now, if I pull up this text, it's just going to automatically put it into this text frame, which is great because then I can lay out all my text where I want. And then as I manipulate things to 
change the layout to how I want it to be, I don't have to worry about losing text anywhere. So let me just select this and delete. Notice that if your text doesn't fit within the text frame, you get this red plus sign, which is basically a warning to say, hey, there's more text in here than this, the frame which can support it. It needs to go somewhere. So it's easy enough just to click that and drop it somewhere else. So I have my text there. Okay. So let's talk about how we can see this text. You can visualize it. If you go to View, Extras, Show Text Threads, this is a visual representation of where your text is going. So these, these uh, threads will not be printed, but it's just good as things get more complicated if you have everything linked together uh, to know where all your text is going. I don't use these too often, but it's just good to know that they're there. So I'm going to hide those. And now let's talk about, I'm going to drop this down. And let's just say for the sake of argument, I wanted to put in my introduction, so I'm going to say introduction. I don't want, I want this to be a title. I don't want it to be my first body, so I'm going to select that text, and then over here in my paragraph style window, hit title. Whoa, so that's really too big. So what I'm going to do instead is just, after it's already been dropped in, I can just make it smaller until it all fits. Okay, looks good. All right, great. So now these are linked together, but I have a separate text here. So let's say I, let's say I pulled this down and there was text included on here. Now there's a couple ways if I didn't want to include this body text in this frame couple things you could do. Sort of the quick and dirty way is to select double click in here and hit enter a couple times. But you see that's like pretty sloppy because it's spacing it out according to the size of this type and not to my body text. So that's rather inelegant. A probably simpler way is to grab this handle of this text frame and just pull it up until it doesn't fit that text box anymore. So it bumps down which is great. Or, alternatively, if I double-click over here, I can say type, insert special character, or I'm sorry, insert break character, and I want a frame break. And what that's going to do is push all of my text from one frame to another, but as you can see, it still didn't work properly, so I could probably just select that body text to get it back to where it needs to be. But in this case, so there's a, there's a few different ways to do it. Probably the way that I would most likely do it is to just grab the handle down here and just pull it up so it's sized to where you want it to be. And it's good to have all this stuff linked because then as you change things, as we'll see in a minute, um, it will automatically update so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so let's pull this down. Let's make this text, uh, let's make this three columns. So I have three columns of text. And then I'm just gonna type fill with placeholder text. Okay, so that's a lot of text. It's always good to break up your text with images. So let's insert an image. So I'm going to go File, Place, or Command or Control D. I have this great stock image of these people riding a city bike. So this image is way too big for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scale tool, which is over here, or you can hit S. And I I'm going to take this anchor point and put it in the top right, top left corner, which is the default. And then while holding the shift key, I'm going to click and drag until it aligns with the outside edge. 
Mm, so that's still too big. So what I'm going to do is just make it even smaller. And the reason why you hold the shift key is because it will be it will proportionally scale the object. If I let go of the shift key, it will scale it in any size and then you get really like distorted images. So you want to avoid this from happening. So instead, just hold down the shift key. Okay, great. I'm going to select my arrow. Uh, I'm going to want to drop this in the center of my page. So that pink line down the center says I'm at the center, center line. And then that green line says that I'm at the center of the text. So that's perfectly in the center there. So, but now as you can see, the text isn't wrapping around the image. The image is just sort of on top of the text. So that's a problem because I can't read what's going on behind it. So the easiest way around this is just to select the object and then come to your text wrap panel, which is over here on the right, or window, tools and tables. Or I'm sorry. I actually don't know where it is. It's right here, text wrap. And I'm going to say wrap around the bounding box. And so what that's going to do is it's going to shift all of my text so that it doesn't come in contact with the image. But as you can see over here, it's really right up on that border. I want it to have a little bit more space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. And then in this option here, it's linked right now. I'm going to push this up to what looks good. Let's say eight points. So I have like a little bit of breathing room. Maybe I'll make it nine. Okay, great. And so you can see what's nice is that because these text boxes are linked, what it did is just shifted everything down. Okay, so let's drop in another image. I'm gonna hit Command or Control D to bring up my place menu. This image of this guy on a bike here. So I want him, I'm just gonna click and drag So here he is. And now I want to text wrap around him, but the difference this time, just gonna adjust that, center it. So I'm centered now, but I have this text wrap, but if I say wrap around the bounding box, if I say wrap around the bounding box, you can see my bounding box is huge and I'm left over with like all of this white space. And what I wanted to do instead is I want the text to contour around the image. So that way it's like it's like it's wrapping this man on his bicycle. So I'm going to say no text wrap. Or I'm sorry, text wrap. And then in this drop down menu, which is in your options. So if it defaults like this, just go show options here. And I want to wrap to So I'm sorry. So you want to select wrap around the object shape. And then under the contour options, instead of the same as the clipping box, which is this box, I want to click this drop panel and say the alpha channel. And what that's going to do is it's going to read the, read the image and find out where the alpha channel is. And as you can see it in this light blue outline here, Okay, and now I can just bump this up and you can see what it's doing is increasing the size of that border. So I just want to get it big enough so that, that that hole, for example, is big enough so that no text can fit in there. And so what we have now is a text that wraps around the shape of this man. So if I hit W, it looks pretty clean. Okay, so now that I've laid out this great document, I have my first page, my titles, I have my text where I want it. This is all looking really good. You know, maybe I need to come in here and manually insert a paragraph break, and then I can just click and hold that. Go to paragraph styles, first body, get that drop cap in there. Great, this is, this is looking really good. Put another one in here. All 
All right, great. Okay, so I've laid out this document. It's looking really good. I'm feeling good about it. And I'm ready to send it off to either get reviewed or to send it to one of my teammates so that they can work on it. So there's a couple ways to do it. The first is if you want to export this document to a PDF, which is usually the most common if you're going to be emailing it or sending it to a printer to be printed. So you come to your file menu and say file export. You get this export window here. Let me go to my desktop. The format, the default is PDF for print. Uh, PDF interactive would be for an online PDF if you've embedded hyperlinks into everything so that those could be selectable. Uh, Flash is if you're going to turn this into a website. Uh, InDesign markup is if you're going to be sending the file to someone who has a version of InDesign that's different from yours because there's not backwards compatibility in InDesign. So if my friend or colleague is working with CS5, I would send them this IMDL file or IDML file. But let's say a print, which is the default. I'll call it bike share. And then save. And now what it's going to do is give me this prompt with all of my export options. So I want to export all of my pages. You can either export them as individual pages or spreads, depending on how you want it to read. So individual pages means that these would be exported separately versus if I did it as a spread, this spread would be exported as one image together. Let's stick with pages. Um, marks and bleeds, if you're using bleeds or slugs, you can put crop marks, uh, other options here. The defaults are great, so if it's going to print, you can just say high quality print. If it's going to live on the internet or be emailed to someone, say smallest file size ever, and what that's going to do is compress all of your images to maximize the efficiency of the file so it's really small. Whereas if you have a high quality print, it's going to be a really big file. Now, I'm going to cancel that. Now, if I was working with a teammate on this project and I did a bunch of work and I wanted to send the file for them to continue working on. Because of how InDesign works, and we can see that over here in our links panel, is one really nice thing that's also problematic at times is rather than embedding the photo images or any of the images into the document itself, it instead links to it. And so you can see that here, I have this capital bike share link that has a specific location, which is on my desktop. Why this is important is because if I sent just the InDesign file and not any of these image files, the InDesign file would look for this image file and be unable to find it. And then you would have a broken link, so it wouldn't work. So the, the quickest and easiest way to send working files to teammates is to go file package and what that's going to do is package everything that is needed to properly represent this file so in this case and you can see in the summary it's going to export the entire publication I use the two typefaces the myriad pro for my headers and then this minion serif for my uh, body text and then it's also going to include all of my links so if I package that so I'll have to save it so let's say we save it to my desktop as bike share you can include some printing instructions like put your name and information on here so if you're sending it to someone from a different company and what this is going to do as I hit package Is, is it makes a folder, it includes the original InDesign file, my document fonts, and then all of the linked images. So that way I can hand this off to anyone who's using InDesign CS6 and they'll be able to open up this file and it will look exactly the same as the file I was just working on. 
Okay. Well, that's it for the quick crash course introduction to InDesign. I hope this was helpful. And there are lots of other great resources online to learn more about the program. We just really scratched the surface today. As a UCLA student, you have access to lynda.com through learnit.ucla.edu. And there's also a wealth of other tutorials that you can find just by doing a Google search. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you're excited about InDesign. And I wish you the best of luck. Thanks again.